We are looming live over the great state of Iowa. Will Regan here. With me as always, Captain Hal Overman at the controls of our mighty flying fortress. How are you, Hal? Let me know when you're on. I'll be quiet. We're on. And if commenting on sports had a hall of fame, then he would be in it. It's the man to my right, Eric Ratman. Well, actually, they have a sports broadcasting hall of fame, Will. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, then you'd be in that one, too. Well, thanks so much, and here we go again with another exciting sports matchup, this time between two struggling swishball teams with nothing to lose but pride. And pride is hard to come by in this sport. That's right, Will. Swishball's been plagued throughout its history by scorn and derision. Why, just last year, the city of Bangor, Maine, sued Major League Swishball for sponsoring a youth program in their city. They said it encouraged youth to play. And as you know, Will, Swishball was born here in the lush cornfields of Iowa. The tall stalks helped players hide from that bullet-like projectile hit in their direction out in the field. And remember, the Swishball is technically harder than a rock honed out of rubberized cubic zirconia. And for those of you who maybe never played as a child, you have to imagine that fierce little orb about half the size of your fist coming at you at maybe 200 miles an hour could knock you unconscious or at least change your outlook for some time. And that's why hurlers in this game have to hit the ground fast as they release that ball. Imagine one of those in your eyeball. Sheesh, I mean, I'll stick a golf ball in my eye as a goof, like, hey, teacher, can I be excused? I have Graves' disease. But to have one planted there at 200 miles per hour is no picnic, I can imagine. So let's talk about today's game. The Cedar Rapids Rabbits enjoying home field advantage. Which means they probably won't get food poisoning. As is often the case for the visiting team, even though the league said they're going to crack down on that tactic. Of course, the smart competitors bring their own food. And going up against the Rabbits, the team defending last place again this season, the Des Moines Monks. We're happy to be here with our fans in Iowa known for its landscape of rolling plains and cornfields, and Des Moines, of course, known for its Museum of Art, featuring paintings by native Iowan Grant Wood. And the state bird is the American goldfinch. Oh, I wondered what that was on your shoulder. One flew by the blimp just before we went on the air. Uh, we had the window open, unfortunately. Well, you really do your homework for these broadcasts. The goldfinch, no kidding. Well, Iowa is steeped in history. And corn. Iowa, it's where corn was born, to borrow a phrase from the Corn Growers Union. And it doesn't hurt to schmooze the Chamber of Commerce. They were kind enough to send up this very nice fruit basket. Embellished with some handsome Iowa corn stalks. Our pregame wrap is brought to you by one of our most loyal sponsors who stayed on us after the crash of 2008. Well, we did crash right in their store in Davenport, of all things. That's right. Davenport's R Us should be your first choice for sofas. And be sure to stop in and see their complete line of nappers. These beauties are designed to give sports fans the perfect snooze before, after, or during the game. The nappers feature the all-new padded rail to prevent annoying roll-offs. And their exclusive memory foam not only remembers the contour of your body, the armrest speaker will tell what the score was when you dozed off. And these super sofas from Davenport's R Us and Davenport come in team colors, which your wife will appreciate. Got out-of-town guests coming for the weekend? See their extensive line of hide beds But these hide beds are special. They hide your guests, too. They look like a sofa during the day and at night. Your guests are comfortably folded right inside, just as snug as a bug for an amazing night's sleep. And if you order your height a guest this weekend, they'll throw in matching pillows and pajamas. Do they have those little footy jammies? Yes, just for you and very large toddlers. So drop by Davenport's RS in Davenport with one convenient location right across from bumper car parking. We're getting near game time, and to help with our coverage from the sports blimp is our man on the ground, ear, eye, and nose throat specialist, Dr. Leonard Hackney. Yes, I'm here when needed. Dr. Hackney will be covering the injuries as well. Today's first first hurl will be tossed out by legendary accordionist accordionist Myron Myron Flornor. Flornor. Nice toss, but he didn't duck. That happens. The leadoff striker made contact, hit the ball right up the middle, and hit Myron right where it hurts. Which is just about anywhere. That's probably going to make a bruise. Luckily, it hit Mr. Flornor in the G-flat on his Stradella base layout. 
Is that serious? Well, it is for the accordion. By the way, Myron is scheduled to star in a post-game concert with Big Tiny Little from the Lawrence Welk Orchestra. Well, that's kind of in doubt now, I think. Well, we'll have to see what the x-rays show. It's the Cedar Rapids Rabbits meeting up with the Des Moines Monks. The Monks wearing the throwback uniforms today, the long dark robes with the hoods dating back to the 10th century. There's some pictures of those early teams in the ballpark museum downstairs. Abner Rack is the starting hurler. You might want to see those next time you're here. In the backstop position today, catching is Archie Gonzer, and he's back from the disabled list. He put himself on the DL last week after that humiliating loss to the Phoenix Fairies, the first all-girls swishball team in the league. Players get 10 days disabled each season. Bert Alamande is playing first hole today. Candy Budover playing Rambler. She just came over from the ferries, traded for a groundskeeper. And we have Riker Furrow out in left playing LG. The left grazer position is pretty demanding for a man his size, having to cover a couple of acres of tall grass chasing down those flies. The flies are not too bad this year, though. Well, thanks to that first hurl thrown out there by our celebrity musician, Willis Chalmers is in the first hole. You can see the top of his cap. Willis has a great move to that hole, kind of runs and plops, I guess you'd have to to say. Let's check in with our man on the ground now, Dr. Hackney. Eric, this time uh, Willis jumped in head first into the bunker or the hole. Uh, they always tell you not to do that. Good thing he has that steel plate in his head. Were you kind of thinking of getting one of those? From then on, I guess you don't have to worry about a thing. Then you're pretty much bulletproof. It's either that or tucking my droopy eyebrows. So let's look at the rabbit starting hurler. Abner has a great move to the ground. After that camouflage color ball leaves his hand, he kicks out his legs out from under himself, and his face is flat on the ground in a second. That's critical in this game. The Brits don't call it pitch and duck for nothing. Backs up, Archie Gonzer sends in the signals. Right here. Gonzer really just calls them out loud. There's the hurl. Swatter Ernesto Blunt takes a swing and misses. And misses. And misses. Screws his shoes into the ground. Umpire Rita Bunker helps him up as he untangles his legs. That hurl clocked at 211. Backstop Gunzer refocusing his eyes, shaking off the pain. He sends Abner Rack the signs. Time! And the umpire calls a timeout. I guess that means a potty break again. Well, before the game, she told me that she was on a new diet and was trying to drink more water. Well, let's take a break to get in a word for one of our loyal sponsors, Granny's Crab Apples. Crab apples are a tough little fruit, so it takes a tough little lady to pick them. That's right, it's crab apple season, so come and get your fix of those tart and tangy little crab apples picked by our favorite little granny. Little Granny's Crab Apples have been picked for almost a century by Little Granny herself. Can't do this much longer. Every tangy crab apple was picked the old-fashioned way by a little old lady on a ladder with a bucket. There are so many. Now you can order one crate and get the second crate free. Give a crate of crab apples to a friend or whip up a batch of crab apple jam or crab apple butter. Stick a bunch of crab apples together with toothpicks and make a crab apple crab to scare the kids on Halloween. Little Granny's crab apples are organically grown and harvested with love. Nature grows them. I pick them. And thanks to Granny for tossing up a few crab apples into the sports blimp. Here comes another one. They're kind they're kind of tart. And they're tangy. Look for them in the higher priced organic section of your favorite store or on the side of the freeway. No, those are aren't those road apples? The umpire is back in position and we're ready to resume action now. Too bad the restrooms are all the way out in the bleacher section. So Willis Chalmers is at the first hole. Swatter Ernesto Blunt has the stick in his hand waiting for the hurl from Abner Rack. The windup and the hurl. Wow, that was a blazer. And Blunt gets a piece of it and sends the ball high out into the field where the left grazer Riker Furrow is waiting under for the catch. But... No, he lost it in the sun and the ball hits him in the head. Those camouflage balls are pretty hard to see. Ouch. Ouch. Runner Willis Chalmers climbed out of the first hole and is making his way to the second as medics make their way to the outfield. The ball bounced off Foro's forehead and into the stands for a bounce rule double. Wait, the fan chose to put the ball back into play. What a throw. The fan tossed a rocket to second hole where it hits Chalmers just as he dives for safety in the second hole. That beamed him pretty good. He's not coming out of the hole, Will. And people say swish ball is too slow. Things are popping here in the first outing. The buzzards are circling already for the Des Moines monks. 
Since they changed the rule last year requiring the defensive player to actually hit the runner, we've seen injuries spike. Well, time. umpire Rita Bunker has called timeout again. Another potty break? This time it's to allow the emergency helicopter to land on the field and tend to the wounded. So to recap the game so far, the Cedar Rapids Rabbits have their left grazer mortally injured in the field and the Monks have their first runner in the second hole. While starting hurdler Abner Rack is still flat on his face, having hurled and dropped to the ground. He's got both hands covering his head, waiting for the all clear. There it is. This game originated in Great Britain, you know, where it was known as Pitch and Duck, and I have to wonder if the Brits would even recognize the game today. It was outlawed by Oliver Cromwell in 1657, so I don't think many Brits would know what we're talking about right now. And speaking of history and game appreciation kind of stuff... It's time for a Sports Blimp player profile. To say that Swishball great Rob Shift got an early start in his career is an understatement. Rob's parents, realizing early on that their son was extremely talented, traded him to the Des Moines Monks at age 11. For compensation, they received brand new 1972 AMC Pacer along with World Federation Wrestling season tickets. Rob speaks highly of his early days as a 12-year-old in the minor leagues, traveling with the team by bus. Sometimes they'd let him drive. He jokes that he was a designated driver before he was a designated hitter. By the time Rob was old enough to drink, he quit smoking and started to get serious about taking care of himself. During his illustrious career, Rob pioneered the role of the switch hitter in Swishball. He'd switch from a bat to a golf club, the nemesis of many low ball hurlers and fans in the stands. Rob Swift, Hall of Fame fielder. His advice to up and coming players, stay in driving school, get your license. Rob Swift, one of the most challenging interviews of my career. I didn't think he did interviews. He doesn't. I had to wait till he was asleep. Well, it seems that this game is plagued by interruptions. Umpire Rita Bunker has called time out again to chase a gopher. She'll never catch it. And even if you do catch it, you're holding a gopher. Then what do you do? And isn't it supposed to rain about now? While the groundskeepers are covering the field and the fans with rain tarp, Let's remind you that next time we'll be bringing you up to date with a week's worth of sports in a minute. And then we'll be flying the old sports blimp to cover the Prelude to Wimbledon, the semi-final International Sheep Tennis Open. If we can get a sponsor to cover the fuel. Until then, this is Will Regan along with Eric Rantman wishing you more than a sporting chance on the Sports Blimp All Sports Network. Sports Blimp is produced and distributed with a grant from the Goodyear Dirigible Company in Bucyrus, Ohio. Many of America's other favorite sports are played in the shadow of the Sports Blimp.